Well, this is a, a digital negative. Let me turn it up. Yeah, this is the front side um, of one of the still lives. Um, so it came from building the, the still life and then photographing it. And then I work with a technician who um, is really skilled at Van Dyke printing and bumps up the contrast really high so that there's a really um, big difference in positive and negative. Um, and then we print them out digitally. And so each one is full size, a full size negative. And then what would happen is the fabric, the prepared fabric would be immersed in the Van Dyke chemical, iron flat. This negative is placed over it with a full sheet of glass to um, create, you know, good sandwich. And then a light box is, I don't, I don't have a light box this big, so I do it in sections. Somebody told me about a tanning bed light, which, you know, I don't really have space for, but sounded pretty cool. But what I do is I lay my light box over this for about 12 minutes, move it to the next section on something this large for another 12 minutes and another 12 minutes. So um, as you do that, the um, silver nitrate um, exposes the image um, on your fabric. So that part's done. The fabric now has this kind of orange image. That fabric is rinsed uh, for about a minute under you know, running water and then fixed in a, another chemical bath and then rinsed again. And then you've got the print. These are all made the same way with, so each one of these prints has its own negative. It, it's the second of a series that I hope will be three bodies of work. The first one was called Memory's Main Gate, and that was um, developed from imagery of, from my own family, from um, a trip I took to Poland and Ukraine I called it memory's main gate because rather than, than kind of get to the real conscious and, and um, figure out what was important to my mother or my father or what represents, I didn't do that so much as, wow, why did I just think of the bandstand in Oakland that we went to when we were growing up? Um, and kind of pay attention just while taking a walk, while talking to somebody, oh gosh, every time I cut an avocado, I remember the avocado tree my sister grew. So kind of the things that bubble up that maybe uh, aren't iconic of, um, of what I was trying to get at. So I came up with, I don't know, a lot of images and I used this Van Dyke process to transfer them onto fabric and then created, I think, of 14 um, book forms. So that was the first iteration and then the second piece was called large regional still lives and using that idea of my own family background I sent out a query letters to a sampling of people uh, in Seattle and asked them if they wanted to participate in this project which would be um, creating a still life with objects that held memory or meaning for them they had collected and put out on a table different objects um, from nature or their home that was important to them and together we kind of built what they these things how these things would fit together in some kind of interesting way um, against a white background what I didn't know would happen was spending you know I thought okay I'll set it up I'll shoot it and will be done but as it turned out every object was really meaningful and, they, and everybody wanted to talk about them and I wanted to hear about them. Let me show you this one. This is one of my favorite ones. I went to um, someone's house and we were going through a lot of her things and she opened a box and there was this little scrap of paper that says Red Wing Blackbirds 13 geese crossing the road. 
and she remembered that her her father had taken her son, who was probably at that time three, um, on a walk, and he was speeding through everything and you know running around and going really fast and not being observant of anything. So the the grandfather decided that they would, you know, well let's count how many geese let's. And he had written written it down and given it to the mom, like, look, what, tell your mom what we saw. And the kid's now, I think, 25. And she forgot that she had it put in, in this little this little bowl. And um, when she took it out, when she took the bowl out, she took she found the, the scrap, and that became kind of the focus of her still life. It's funny because preparing the fabric, I start with a piece of white fabric and I dye it, uh, kind of a parchment color. And then I um, coat it with the photographic chemicals and then remove most of them so that you have kind of a mottled background, mostly this parchment color maybe with some fragments of the brown printing um, <clears throat> to create a surface and also, you know, stepping away. When you look at it, oh, that's interesting, there's a little, but, you know, kind of in my mind, it's like the layers of memory and then removing parts of memory and having fragments of memory. So it all kind of ties into the idea, the bigger idea, but it's really beautiful too. Um, so I like that idea that you're making something beautiful and a little mysterious but then it also has to do with the basic concept of what your you know what your idea is When I do dyeing, I have a little dye studio in my back <clears throat> area, and um, I have you know 25 buckets. And the labor of that is that you you got to wash all the fabric, and then when it's wet, you measure all the dyeing, and then you're lifting buckets and wringing fabric, and it's really pretty physical. Um, I have a mat that I stand on, you know, because it's it, after you know a long day, it's it's hard on your body. And I really love that. It has a rhythm. You know, you lift that bucket, you squeeze that. You got to go through all the bucket squeezing, and um, you got to lift the bucket up into the sink full, and you know, put it down full. And there's a lot of kind of a rhythm that goes through the day. And I, I definitely like to do it all. You know, get it all done in one day. So it's a it's a long day of dying and squeezing and rinsing and and that kind of thing. I started out as a dancer and trained as a ballet dancer uh, when I was really young. And then when I got to college, I switched to modern, seeing as I was really tall for a ballet dancer. I went through college as a modern dancer, worked in that field for a number of years. Um, and I did do some visual arts there, but was really focused on dance. Um, I had a nice career and danced with a couple of great companies here and traveled and that kind of thing. Well, for dance, I mean, you learn rhythm, you learn about space on the stage, um, individual space, dividing space, um, as well as like what's the underpinning of the whole piece about. I mean this stuff has, it's crazy how much work it is. Um, but you know that just adds to the, I don't know, sensuality or 
um, complexity uh, and although some of it looks simple I mean I, I don't like a lot of stuff all cluttered but there is a lot of stuff and you know the last step would be for a quilt the texture that the quilting stitch makes and you know that can take mm, probably 10 days of just quilt making of just stitching um, it really can it's amazing how long it takes I mean, I love the labor of it, and I love things, well, when I look at things, I love to see the hand in them. I, it's funny because I've chosen dance, I, cho I chose dance. That's kind of the bottom rung of um, the arts, mm -hmm. you know. And then I chose sign language interpreting. That's also, you know, in the social services and mostly women are interpreters. And now in the visual world, I've chosen quilt making. And sometimes I do actually stand up straight and say, I'm a quilt maker. If I'm in a group of artists, I might say, I'm a quilt maker. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a group of quilt makers, I might say I'm an artist. Uh -huh. He saw 